But I'm also going to speak from a space that we're holding each other accountable. I'm not going to lie to you and I'm not going to let you lie to me because whatever we talk about, if it has to do with us not needing a mate, we do. Because we'll say we don't need a man, but why are you having children then? Why are we having kids? You're having sex with men. You're having children by men. Why can't you decide that you're going to just pick one and be with one? Have confidence. I think a lot of men nowadays lack the confidence to lead. Um, Another thing with them, they're repeating the rhetoric. I'm a man. You're supposed to follow me. But you haven't prepared yourself. You haven't healed from those childhood traumas. You haven't healed from your past relationships. You're listening on social media when they're saying all women cheat, all women are sneaky, all women can't be trusted. So if you believe those types of things, then we are what we think. I have a special guest with us today. It's first time on the show. Special (laughs) guest, life coach, Latanya Brown. How are you doing this evening, Latanya? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Sean? Thank you for having me. For sure. You were uh, highly recommended by one of our past guests, uh, Brandy. She, as a matter of fact, we're going to be recording today. So uh, okay. she said, make sure that <laughs> you get in touch with Latanya. I said, OK, well, right. get in touch. <laughs> well, I'm glad to- you did. <laughs> yes, for sure. Especially with today's topic, Ooh. why modern women are struggling to find a partner. Mm-hmm. This can be controversial, but... It's all good right. because I want to hear from your experience and even just from some of your wisdom that maybe you okay. can help out the ladies who's listening and watching as well. Okay. So why do you think modern women are struggling to find a partner? Well, first, let me say, I know it's going to be a controversial and um, I think in today's climate, especially with women, it's hard to hear the truth about things and the accountability that it takes to own that. Um, But I think really it is um, rhetoric. I think it is um, many people speaking, but not saying anything. And then I think people adopt, they adopt the negative. They adopt um, all of the, you couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't of relationships instead of saying, Hey, you know, who is compatible for me? Who am I willing to work with to build a life with for me? Not, you know, what social media tells me my relationship should be, not what my friends or my family tell tell, um, me that it should be. It really should just be around um, knowing yourself, owning yourself, showing up healed and willing to cooperate and compromise. Mm, You said cooperate and compromise. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> you gonna be stepping on some toes today. Yes. One thing about me, but listen, one thing about me, I'm I believe we need to hear the truth. I think we spend a lot of time cheerleading on each other and telling each other things that keep us single. Mm. And it's not gonna be popular what I say, but for those that the message uh permeates with, they'll understand. And that's all really that's all you can ask for the people that the message you know, the people that received the message, let me say. Yes. I know. I totally agree because, and I tell people a lot of times my message is not going to resonate with everybody. That's okay. Everybody's not going to like it. It's okay. Especially in the comment section. I see some stuff going on in the comments. I'm like, you know, I no need for me to fire back. I just like, Hey, thanks for watching. You took some time to comment. So. Right. 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 What's one thing that men can do to become better candidates to choose in a dating world? Come healed. Come ready to lead. It's easy to ask a woman to be submissive, but she has to trust you, right? So you have to come in being trustworthy. You have to come in having some direction for her to go in. But if you don't know where you're going, how can she follow you? And it's more one of those things Trust me because I'm a man. Follow me because I'm a man. That's a that that sounds good, but in this day, it's hard to follow a man that doesn't know where they're going. And especially for a successful woman who's worked on herself, working on her career, raising her children, you want someone who can come in and help carry the load, not be a burden. Mm-hmm. That's good. 
Yeah, because and I, I speak the same thing to men as well. As like you you got to give her the vision, right? You just can't tell her I'm I'm working on my my new rap album. And, and no shade right. to those, you know, if you do right. music, right. You know, you know, no shade. People make it, right? Right? People make it, but yeah, no, yeah. I I definitely get it. But thing two, it's um, have confidence. I think a lot of men nowadays lack the confidence to lead. Um, another thing with them, they're repeating the rhetoric. I'm a man. You're supposed to follow me, but you haven't prepared yourself. You haven't healed from those childhood traumas. You haven't healed from your past relationships. You're listening to, on social media when they're saying all women cheat, all women are sneaky, all women can't be trusted. So if you believe those types of things, then we are what we think. Mm. And we attract to ourselves what we think. Mm. Yeah, so. because there's a lot of people on social media that will say a lot of negative stuff. And even <laughs> even if you are dating, I would say just to check people's social media profiles, because a lot of times people are like, oh, you know, that, that ain't really me. Right, like, right, oh, right. Because you hide right. right. behind something, you know. And so. who are you pretending for? Because if you can't show up on your own page as yourself, who are you? I mean, why would you get on social media and pretend to be someone else? Mm -hmm. Do you not love who you are outside of social media or, you know, or are you trying to pre pretend to be something or fit in? You know, it's kind of one of those things where they get on social media. Everyone wants to be on the same um, join the crowd. Everyone wants to be a part of the crowd. No one wants to be separate from that. And I think because people lack that um, individuality. Mm -hmm people end up saying the same things and doing the same things because if you stick out, then someone's going to critique you for not thinking what everyone else thinks. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay to have your own voice. It, you know, you right. don't have to follow the crowd and I get it with social media and, and, and mm -hmm. the pressure because there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that won't even follow their dreams because they're afraid of what someone might say on, about them on social media. And I'm like, you're going to mm -hmm. let somebody stop you a bunch yes. of trolls or people that have cat pictures in their profile pictures, right. you know, right. they're going to stop you because they said something negative. Don't right. Territory. And I think too, it's, um, it stopped me for a long time. If I can be transparent, mm. just as far as becoming a life coach, because I thought to be a life coach, I needed to be presented as perfect. I didn't need to be presented as perfect. I just needed to be able to identify the things on my within myself that I needed to heal. I needed to take the opportunity to learn those things and to grow those things and then be okay with helping other people discover that about themselves and helping them grow too. And that's all life coaching is it about. It isn't about whether I'm perfect or whether you're perfect. It's really just about us understanding there are opportunities for us to be better mm -hmm. and wanting that for other people. For sure, because we need as many healthy uh, life coaches as possible. Because yes, and, yes. and, and I get it because all the negative stuff is safe. Mm -hmm. So people yes. gotta continue to to keep that kind of ball rolling. They gotta keep it. So yes. I understand, but I think if we and you know, and I even tell people if you have that kind of platform, okay, that's okay, yeah. whatever. Right. But let's right. just at least level the playing field. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I meaning um, here's the thing. I gravitate to positive people. I gravitate to positive experiences and things that can grow me and stretch me. That's not for some people, right? Um, and we have to check our mindsets. What is your mindset? So if, if you're lured to negative things, then that's your mindset. You can one day decide that you don't want to be that way anymore. You don't want to follow that crowd and then come over to the other side. Or you can, you know, you can stay that way. Everyone has a choice. And everyone has a story, so. Mm, that is so true. Love it. Love it. What can we do to create healthy relationships between men and women? Because in this day and age, we got the gender war going on. Yes, so, yes. You know, so what are you? What do you think we can do to create healthy relationships between men and women? First, stop listening to people say that we don't need each other. We absolutely, we absolutely need each other. Um, we're we're put on this earth to be together. So if you walk around with that, if you walk around with my mate is here, 
I just need to be prepared for him, not necessarily outwardly saying you need to be this, you need to be this. I want to be a walking um, example of what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I want to be, I work on me. So many times we're focusing on the man. We're focusing on the woman. Focus on you. Heal yourself. Um, be the thing that you're looking for. Because it's easy to say, oh, I want a man this, this, and this. But you're not agreeable. You're not, you know, you don't know how to compromise. You don't know how to communicate through issues. And then it'd be okay after that. Mm -hmm. You know, and no one's saying be abused. And no one's saying being neglected or any of those things. But I made a post about this earlier. Nothing is perfect. Our jobs aren't perfect. Our children, and we've raised them and they're not perfect. We can't get them to be perfect. You know, none of, nothing is perfect, but somewhere along the line, someone told someone that if you meet a person and it's supposed to be perfect. Butterflies, we're rose-colored glasses. We need to fly off into the clouds, right? Initially, yes, when you meet a person, but then after that, reality sets in. This is a person that's had experience and lived lives and they've carried that forward. And I have too. Is this someone I can get together? We can help grow each other, help work through our problems and then stay, stay. Cause nothing's going to be rosy all the time. Nothing's going to be perfect every time. And if you go into that, expecting that, then that's where the disappointment happens because after the honeymoon honeymoon phase is over, then you don't want the relationship anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, they just did it for the ground. They just look yeah. at Instagram. Yes, yes. And some people only do it for the, only, some people only do it for um, what other people perceive it to be. You know, we talk about hypergamy and we talk about all of these things, but many times when people are in hypergamous relationships, they're not, that's not love. That's There's no love there. People are going to be taken care of. Then they look at these celebrities and they look at these these girls on Instagram. These these people are habitually single. So obviously money isn't the thing that gets you a mate. You know, there's a Erica Badu. There's a Jill Scott. They're single. These other people, they're single. They don't have mates. So what are they doing? They're working on their careers. They're bosses, you know, with air quotes. But what are they actually doing? to make themselves more um, attractive to the type of person that they're looking for. Because obviously that they haven't found that person yet or that person hasn't found them yet. You know, so it's easy to look and say, oh, I want this life, but it's an, it's empty without love, I would think. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I, and I always tell people that God made us, made us interdependent, not independent. You know, we were created, like you say, for each other, with yes. each other, to yes. do life together. Yes. And, and and marriage yes. isn't for everyone no. either. No, know, so. no, it's not. And then understanding that if you don't have the capacity to, I say people always put conditions on wanting to be loved unconditionally. You want to be accepted unconditionally. You want to be accepted in the state that you're in. But you can't accept that from someone else. Sometimes you see on social media, you know, it's like, oh, if I met this man, you knew who he was. Say if you meet a perfect man, he's perfect for you. Um, he has the job. You know, he can help foot some of the bills. He can do, you know, he's a good father and all that. What if he gets weak and he gets on drugs? Do you walk away from him or do you help him with his struggle? Because to me, it's an affliction like what if he has cancer? What if he's disabled in a car accident? Any of these things. So it's like you want the love as long as it's presenting itself the way you want it to. As long as it doesn't inconvenience your life. As long as it keeps a smile on your face when you wake up. You need to be able to make yourself happy. And then if you can make yourself happy, you can be happy with someone else. Mm, yeah. So. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because we live in a convenient world yes right? so we we all we're being conditioned mm -hmm. to be everything to be convenient i mean here it is we got uber eats we got i mean i was at the gas station the other day they got a checkout line at the gas station they got the little <laughs> the little scanner that you, you can check out at the gas station i said oh my god gas station yeah. is convenient now 
Yes, yes, you got one or two things. Go ahead, don't wait in line, you know, the people with the lottery in front of you. So <laughs> go ahead and get your two sodas and leave. But absolutely. Um, convenience and also complication. Because for as many things that are convenient to us, we complicate so much more things that could be just as simple. Life can be simple. Um, you know, of course, you're going to have the peaks and the valleys, like with anything. And I think people do a disservice to themselves, assuming that love is anything different. It's going to be different. What did o Michelle Obama say? They were married for what, however many years, and 10 of those years, she was miserable. Yeah. She loved her husband, but he wasn't showing up in the way that she needed him to. Did that mean she wanted to leave? No. Does that mean that she suffered? No. It was just that she didn't get up doing cartwheels every day. Yeah. She stayed inside of the mission and the mission was to keep her family together and do her part. That's and her husband had to do his part, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know I'm, I know I'm telling my age when I say this, but uh, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> if something was broke, we will fix it. Yes. Rather, if we went somewhere, we knew somebody to get it fixed or I don't <laughs> if we duct tape something i don't know whatever it was yes we fixed yes. it but now right. all we have to do is just order it on amazon again yes you know yes. it might just need a battery replaced for whatever right. it is right. but our a default setting right. yeah, is it's to, to order throw it. it away yep if it's something new but here's the thing then you're in a habitual cycle of catching fish and throwing them back in the water do you ever eat when you do that do you ever get to have the fish? Do you ever get to, to figure out what you're going to do with the fish? If you're consistently getting it on the hook, bringing it in the boat, it's like, ah, this one, you know, has a spot on it, so I'm going to throw it back kind of thing. So I, I think for the people, for what we are now, we could just work on ourselves. Work on yourself. Get healthy. Get healed. Figure out what your triggers are. Figure out um, where you can compromise on things. You know, and I told you this on some of our preliminary conversations. I think just in general, as generations come, if we become better women, right, we raise better children, including these men, these sons that we complain about, right? Because if you think of the dynamics or the demographics of who's raising these boys that all of these women complain about, we are raising, we collectively are raising these boys and we're not doing it right because it's showing in the, in the product. It's showing after the equal sign. We are, we, we need our unit. We need the husbands. We need the fathers in the home. We need to rear these children together because what women are doing is they're creating these dependent sons that then go out and get into these relationships with women that don't want dependent men. But no one says in the beginning, hey, Aunt Lisa, you're raising this kind of son and he's going to show up, come up like this. You know, we only complain after the fact. We don't complain when we see it in action. We don't complain when we see our mom doing it or our sisters doing it or anyone else doing it, literally breaking these boys. And then expecting them to become healthy men. And I'm not saying that women are at fault. I'm not. I'm saying that in the climate that we're in, most times the women are in the households alone. And the male figures that could chip in and come in with these boys, they don't. So then we as women, we have to collectively decide that we want to raise better men. We want to get mentors for our son. We want to get them in therapy as soon as we can. And make sure that, you know, we're cre creating an environment that they can thrive in. And like right now, my son's seven years old. If you ask him right now, what is his role as a man, as a husband? Because we talk about it all the time. And he will tell you to, to provide and protect for his family and to solve problems. And I also tell him that his happiness matters too. So I'm cultivating him in an environment where he understands that you're not here to be dependent on anyone. You're here to be sure footed. You walk with your head up and then you also attract a woman that fits the bill, you know, so. Mm. 
that's a whole Instagram reel I'm going to share. <laughs> yeah, <That's good>. serious. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm glad you said it because when it comes out of a man's mouth, but mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm sure they'll say it about me too. Yeah. You no, know, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So if we're if we're raising better girls and we're ready, raising better boys, then we have better families. Mm-hmm. We have better generations to come. Yeah. So I mean, we have to start somewhere. Yeah, and like, women populate the world. <laughs> I know, right? We populate I, the world. Yeah. I, I hear someone said mothers raise their daughters and coddle their sons. And do. And do. Mm-hmm. And do. Yeah. We, we really do. And sometimes I find myself doing that. Mm-hmm. And um, but I think it's just also because mothers are losing so many sons. That you want want to protect them and you want to make sure that they're, they're okay. But at the same time, we're handicapping them, you know, because they don't know how to problem solve on their own. They're not being forced to go out here and figure out a way to take care of themselves. Um, you know, we, we cater to their, their need for materialism and, and all of these things that really don't help them in the big scheme of things, right? If he knows he has to go work for his own things, he's going to be a little bit more, um, conscientious of how he spends that money. If if you're teaching him how to save and you're teaching him all of these things, not that it's perfect, not that we we know it all, but I told my daughters, let's take a finance class together. Do it with them, learn it with them. So, I mean, I just, I feel like there are so many solutions for us to bring it back and, 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 and just to, to become a unit again. And that's my biggest desire. You know, women, I talk and and I talk, and women are like, oh, well, you don't love. I love women. I'm a champion of women. But I'm also going to speak from a space that we're holding each other accountable. I'm not going to lie to you and I'm not going to let you lie to me. Because whatever we talk about, if it has to do with us not needing a mate, we do. Because we'll say we don't need a man, but why are you having children then? Why are we having kids? You're having sex with men. You're having children by men. Why can't you decide that you're going to just pick one and be with one? Yeah, I see. Yeah, I hear that. And I'll, I was like, you know, because I'm time, I don't need no man. I'm like, you six months pregnant. <laughs> you needed them for something. <laughs> who are you? Who are you having sex with? <laughs> Who are you getting pregnant by? Who are you going on these eating dates with? You need a man. You need a man. And and when they hear need, they think that it comes from a place of deficit. No, it comes from a place of wholeness because you're you're being you're able to admit that hey, yes, I am able to take care of myself financially, but is that all that life is? Finances is not all that life is. That's right. Yeah. So you bringing a whole baby into this world. So, right. Yeah. So, you this can decide is, that, but you can't decide to work on a relationship. This is good. I can't wait to get this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to speak to you mm-hmm. in the bonus round. Okay. There's no right or wrong answers. This is okay. Latanya Uncut. Okay. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Um, I want to be careful with how I say this one. Um, I think that I think that they're waiting on something that may not arrive. And let me explain that a little bit. When people, when when women assume that, you know, no matter where you're located in the world, what city you're from, what street, that there's some guy that's out there that's just absolutely perfect. He's going to come in. He's going to sweep you off your feet. He's going to do all of these things. So you don't take the common man. You don't take the guy that really cares about you. You don't take the guy that really loves you. That would be good for your soul because you're saying, hey, he can't buy me a new Mercedes Benz. He can't, you know, he can't pay all of these bills so I can keep all of my money to go shopping or whatever that thing is. So they're not really in the right mindset to be relational 
they're thinking of themselves, you know, and it's more of one of those things where um, I, I, I'm trying to see, oh, that's a good one, Sean. I, I, I think it's kind of just one of those things where, because I'm trying to think, you know, I'm trying to think of the things that I've read, but it's more just around thinking that there's a, a knight in shining armor, which there may very well be, right? Mm -hmm. But then everyone wants the Russell Wilsons of the world, but not so much more but because of the love that he gives is what can be afforded to them in their lives from being with someone like that. You get the jets and you get the champagne and the cars and the clothes, but from what we can see, it's rather boring. Do you want the boredom? Because think about it, when you have, if you if you have $10 million in the bank, right? How much penny candy can you buy? You get tired, right? You get tired. I mean, there's nothing you can't, there, there's this limitless of how much penny stuff you can buy. So eventually you're going to get bored with what you can buy. Then what's left? Do you have love? Do you have respect? Because um, I think a lot of women too, if you look and you've seen it, if it's a common person, if it's a regular man with a regular job, don't put up with anything from him. If it's Russell Wilson, get the bag, sis. Go through whatever. If you, if, you know, you, you've seen plenty of examples. Oh, she's getting the bag, so it doesn't matter. Either it matters or it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, if it, if it's, if 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 you are in it for love, if you're in it for relationship, if it, if you're in it to grow with a person, then be in it for that. If you're in it just for money, then say that. Don't don't pretend like it's about something else. Because it's funny to me how women, when it's about money, everything is okay. When a man can provide her with whatever she wants, everything is okay. So the the scales aren't balanced, right? Because you're saying the person that makes the amount of money that you make, you can't go through anything with him. But if you provide me everything, I can go through anything with you as long as I can look cute, as long as I can dress well, as long as I can keep my money. And I, I just don't think that that gets us anywhere in the long run as far as families and relationships and the love that, that all women seek, right? All women want, everyone wants to be loved. Yeah. Own that. Accept it. And, and say it unapologetically. I want to be loved. And I'm a successful person. I, I have a successful career. I'm life coaching. I'm doing these things. I'm having different projects. But I want love. Mm -hmm. I want, you know, I want to be, um, raise my kids in an environment where they can see what just what real life is about. Not the fairy tale, not the social media life, but what real life is about. We come home, we go to work, we come home, we take care of the children, we vacation, and then that's it. That's a beautiful life. Yeah. People don't think that's a beautiful life. That's an absolutely beautiful life. And it's okay to want that. I so. agree. Yeah, I agree because so many people, and, and I think with the, ri the rise of social media, everybody mm -hmm. you know, is just we see so many images and, and so mm -hmm. many different things, you know, we have the world in the palm of our hands opposed mm -hmm. to what we were growing up back in the day. Mm -hmm. If you were in the neighborhood, whoever, and I'm just using this as an example, the cute right. girl was the cute girl. Right. And and right. she was, she was the pretty girl in the neighborhood and she was the only right. pretty girl. But now <laughs> mm -hmm. you got millions of Instagram models and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, so now it's mm -hmm. like even the look of beauty has changed. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of competition out there. And I think it can damage our young people to a degree because having that much access to to women, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. doesn't help our young men either. No, because everyone thinks they have these options. Yep. Now, now your woman that's at home is not pretty enough. She's not doing enough. And then, but at the same token, you know, and a lot of times just with people in general, you have these visions of grandeur, right? But you don't even have access to these people that you think are an option to you. No one wants to be regular. No one wants to be normal. 
everyone is extraordinary, right? So if I'm extraordinary, of no way can I accept a man that makes sixty thousand a year. You know? Yeah. Everyone's yeah. above a regular life, and I always say this too. You know, we 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 talk about what grandma did and what grandpa did, and this is the question that I pose. Grandma lived the life that grandpa could afford her. So she wasn't jet setting. The hood you came from, they lived in that house that he purchased and paid for, and he paid all of the bills within the scope of his salary. So yes, he could afford to buy a $5,000 house. And they drive that one $700 car. And I know that times have changed and things have grown, but that's the part that they they miss. Grandma was okay with living the lifestyle that her husband could afford her. But women are saying now, you pay for everything, but you don't give me this regular life I saw grandma have. I'm not thinking about that part. My grandpa paid all of the bills. You pay all of the bills, but I want to live in a $500,000 house. I want to drive a Mercedes Benz. I want all of these handbags. If your grandmother had asked Papa for that, she wouldn't have had it either. <laughs> you know, because yeah, she, right. she was okay with living the lifestyle that they had. So you can't do you can't want a traditional man and not want to be a traditional woman. I love that. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of times, you know, people want they want they want certain bits and pieces but they uh-huh. and it's like no and then and then you got a lot of people who say uh yeah you can say grandma and granddad grandpa was uh-huh. together for 60 years but he had another family on the other side of town and all sort of stuff and i'm mm-hmm. just like look every just like this generation nothing is perfect and that that doesn't mean that that was every body's uh, grandmother or grandfather you know what I'm saying? And that's the focus and on the negativity, the focus on, on um, that can't be me type of thing. When you go into a relationship, don't think about everything that goes wrong or could go wrong. Right. You go into it saying, hey, I met a person that I really like. Hey, I met a person that I fell in love with. Hey, I think I can build a life with this person. Go build the life and go be happy. And that's it. That's it. I know that's right. Yeah, so from from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? It didn't give me any um uh, it was realistic. I'm a military brat. My dad was in the Marines for 22 years. Um, so my dad was a little militant, right? And then my mom's from, you know, from a city and you know, she had that typical attitude and um, stance and position of a lot of inner city women, you know, strong, domineering, you know, um, can't be led kind of thing. Um, But it was a good, you know what I'm saying? It was a good relationship. It was a realistic relationship. I would say there was nothing in it that was detrimental or harmed me or uh, gave me any type of um, fear or anything like that. You know, it's just a regular marriage they got divorced though when i was like 10 or 11 mm-hmm. um and uh my dad was able to go on and get married again but then the way that my mother carried herself and the way that she thought and the way that she viewed men um uh, stopped her from being able to have that same thing mm-hmm. because she didn't she didn't go heal and she didn't grow and she didn't stretch herself to say, hey, what can I do to be better, a better woman, um, a better choice, a better fit? It was just more like, you know, Tanya, you can change that oil by yourself. Mm-hmm. You can learn how to do that by yourself. And I tell her all the time, mom, I probably could, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't mean I'm less independent. Right. I think that you, you have to leave space for a man. Mm. to feel needed to um, to help you know we want this help but it has to show up the way we want it he has to say exactly what we want them to say 
He can't look left. Oh, girl, he looked left. So, you know, I don't like that. You know, just anything. Yeah. And so you keep yourself from love because you're being so selective and picky. And another thing I wanted to say, and I wanted to make sure I said that mm -hmm. women always talk about settling. Men settle for us, too. They settle for us, too. And they'll say, oh, you're being a pick me. No, I'm not being a pick me. What I'm saying, I'm telling you is the truth. Because even the ones that say you're trying to be a pick me aren't being picked. So it's not about that. What it's really is about is the truth. You know, we we just have to do better. We, we, we just have to do better and tell each other the truth. And not, girl, you don't need him. Leave him and do all this other kind of stuff like. Real women, you don't, you don't, you don't put that out there for other women. Mm -hmm. You understand that everyone has their own journey, and her journey is not your journey. So if her journey is not your journey, then your advice isn't. Um, it won't be as fruitful because at the end of the day, she's going to do what's best for her and her family and the relationship, not what's best for you, and what you would do with your with your situation. That's right. Yep, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, because I yeah when when people when people talk to me about stuff, I'll say, "Do you want me to listen or do you want my right. opinion?" Right, right, you know, right. Because uh, oh. opinions are only valued if they are requested. <laughs> yeah, yes. And, and then not question. even just that. Come from a holistic place. Come from a whole. Not saying leave your partner or stay with your partner. And especially like for me, like I, it'd be a different conversation if you were being beaten to a pulp and kidnapped and you know what I'm saying it, it was some detriment to your life then that's something different but I'm always going to speak life into your relationship I'm always going to speak life into you so I wouldn't I'm not going to even speak on your mate and what he's doing or what he's not doing what I'm going to say to you is just work on you focus on you and when you focus on you and you, you're evolving and you're growing and you're healing if when you're done doing all of that, he's still here, then that's the person. But only until you can identify yourself, not picking him apart, what's going on with you? Heal you, fix you. And, and that started my journey mm -hmm. to self-discovery, needing to know myself, needing to heal, needing to understand nothing that was happening to me was because of any outside influence. It was happening to me because of who I am. And once I fix who I am, then then there's a different story. Mm -hmm. That's good. I love it. Love it. Last question. There's no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? It used to be one way, but now it's a different way. Um, before it was easier to love someone else, right? Because we know ourselves. We know where we're flawed. We know where we're broken, right? But we don't work on that part. We just work on trying to love someone else harder to make us feel better about who we are. Yeah. But now it's easier to love myself because now I understand myself. Now I know the things, the opportunities that I have to be better because we're all, we all should be evergreen. We all should be evolving and growing on a daily basis. And as you do that, then you'll start, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So then you'll start attracting better love. You'll start attracting um, things like that. And sometimes, and like in with my situation, when I evolved and when I started growing, he started growing. He started evolving because the, the key was for us to be together. So when it's the key is to be together, then when he when when a person notices you're changing and you're becoming better, either they keep up or they get less. And that's how you know that's your person. Fully agree. And that is so true. Man, that that oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I I'm yeah, I'm gonna have to bring you back because there's okay. so much stuff uh that mm -hmm. I want to uh talk about in detail okay. on some of the topics as well. This yeah. has been a phenomenal episode. Latanya, Thank let you. everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Yes, I'm at Intrinsic uh, Heal Wellness Coaching. Mm -hmm. You can contact me at IntrinsicHeal.com. Um, that's my website. You find out more information about me, what services I offer. You know, I'm 
I'm here just for, for a better world, for a better us. I'm here for we. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, Brave Hearts yeah. community, you heard it here. This has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much, Latanya, for taking some time out of your day. Um, you. I'm excited about this episode because, again, we need to heal relationships. Um, yeah. We need to have more conversations like this. Brave yeah. Hearts community, if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you share this with someone. You never know who needs to hear a message like this. If you yeah. are listening via podcast, make sure you mm -hmm. leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd we'll love to hear from you as well. This has been another phenomenal episode. This is Sean Heineman with special guest, Latanya mm -hmm. Brown. Brave Hearts community, take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.